All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Lewis. I'm a librarian over here at the Palm Beach County Library System over in Bell Glade. I'm really grateful that you came to join me today to learn how to uh, learn about screenwriting. Um, I see that at one of you um, is already taking some um, some film classes and, and doing some script writing. And uh, Eleni said that she does uh, a lot of journaling, which is also a great skill to have, um, especially as a source um, of inspiration for, for other stories. And uh, let me go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And um, Lola V. York Branch, uh, could you tell me how many people are watching with you, please? And the, and the, and the, uh, the chat box? Two, yay, all right, good, good, good. So we have five people, excellent, so thrilled. All right, so minimize this page, share screen, and... All right, where is my, there it is, voila out of the way because all right come on get it there we go and can everybody see um my powerpoint uh presentation yes okay wonderful okay let's do this okay so um as it shows here i am a librarian too and why am I offering this class? Well, um, I am an actor, a writer, and a filmmaker. Before I started working in the library system, I worked in film and television uh, production for six years or so, uh, both in Florida as well as in Los Angeles, California. And um, these are a couple of movies that I've actually worked on. I've either written, directed, produced, um, and or acted in them. <laughs> um, Death of a Gas Guzzler was after a uh, ebook uh, that I wrote about alternative fuels that could, you know, help our country um, get off of, of petroleum gasoline. Uh, My Infidel was a dr dramatic comedy. Um, where if you see, I'm, I'm all dressed up as a, as a, um, as a Muslim. <laughs> and uh, the workshop was a, uh, a comedy that I, that I, um, that I co-wrote with a friend of mine that I took act acting classes with. And on the right, Student Bodies was like a, a thriller kind of thing. It was like a supernatural thriller uh, movie that we just recently completed and it was in a 48 hour film festival. So um, I have uh, quite a bit of experience doing this. So let's get started. So what is your story idea? What kind of movies would you like to make? Uh, would you like to make action movies? Are you interested in doing comedies? Maybe uh, some dramatic films or science fiction? Maybe you wanna make a, a romantic comedy or even a documentary or maybe even a horror movie. So uh, you may have heard the term, especially uh, those of you that have taken a screenwriting class um, about um, writing what they call a high concept movie. And a lot of people think they know what a high concept is. And I first wanted to point out what it is not. Um, it is not uh, big action scenes with lots of explosions and, and cars running off cliffs. Um, it's not necessarily something that has a big, you know, $100 million budget. Um, it doesn't have to have special effects, CGI. And it doesn't have to have crazy big personalities and characters. However, what a high concept movie is, it is something that is unique. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, there are people that argue that um, there are no such thing as a uh, <laughs> as a as a unique story. Uh, just different ways to to tell the same story. Um, it has to um, a high concept has to appeal to a wide audience. You know, you want you know most people. One second, I have been signed out. Stand by. You guys can still see and hear me, I hope? Yes. Yeah, we can. Okay, Woo. I was scared. For some reason it said that I was signed up. Um, and I was like, oh no, don't, don't turn up on me. <laughs> so it has to appeal to a wide, wide audience, which means um, you want a lot of people to like your story. Matter of fact, it's important to make sure that a lot of people like your story before you even begin writing. Um, and I'm gonna show you uh, one little trick that you can do to try to find like a, a whole bunch of unique ideas and just to get people's opinions to see what they really think. And I think the best way to do that is that when you write a whole bunch of ideas, um, talk to a bunch of people that don't really know you. So that way they're not worried about hurting your feelings. If it's your close friends, if your close family and everything, they're usually probably gonna be really nice. And it's like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And you know, and, and it may not be the best representation as far as you know what everybody you know really thinks. You know, would they really want to watch this movie? And so 
Um, and it, it could also be explained in one sentence. This is also known as a log line. And I'm going to show you some examples on that um, on a website called imdb.com. Have, um, have any of you heard of IMDB before? No. No? Okay, so IMDB stands for Internet Movie Database. So any movie, any actor, any uh, filmmaker um, that you'd like to look up. And, uh, oh, PJ, you said, yep, yep, to what? Which part? You've heard of IMD. Okay, awesome, great. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, so uh, anybody who uh, is in filmmaking, um, especially particularly in the United States, um, you can look them up to see, you know, what other projects have they worked on. Okay. Matter of fact, uh, since I'm there, let me go ahead and exit out of here. Can you see this website? Yes. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so this is my IMDB page. Apparently, there are other filmmakers and other actors that have my name. It's a very common name um, in Puerto Rico. And um, for, for the past several years, I've, I've worked on a lot of different things as an actor, as a writer, as a, you know, as um, like a whole bunch of different roles in, in film screenwriting. So anybody you want to look up, you can go over here on imdb.com and you can search up uh, a name. Give me a name of, of one of your favorite movies or actors. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, that's a good one. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so right over here, we have Tom Hanks. We're gonna go ahead and click on his name. And you might see, you know, like a, like little headshots that they have here, maybe, you know, little clips of movies that he's worked on. But if you scroll down here where it says filmography, it shows like all the different types of movies that he's worked on as a producer, as an actor, as a writer, as a director. Um, I don't know if you knew that he actually, you know, wrote a number of movies and directed a number of movies. Um, I know him, you know, acting in his films, but I'm not sure which ones he's actually directed in. So um, this shows you usually in order. So let me see if I can scroll down as an actor. Wait a minute, I think I just saw something. I did not know that he was a producer for the Parkland documentary. I don't know if you're familiar with Parkland, um, but um, in 2018, there was a, a school shooting in Parkland, Florida. And uh, there was a number of different movies made out of that, including documentary. And I did not know, oh, wait, wait. no, 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 no. Parkland something different. This is 2013, so it couldn't be the same Parkland. I'm sorry. So where's, ah, actor, Woo, 95 credits. This man is busy. <laughs> so you can see all the different types of movies that he's in and you might even be surprised, you know, some of the movies that he has been in, like Borat, subsequent movie. I didn't know he was in Borat. Uh, that's crazy. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but it's a crazy, crazy, crazy movie. Uh, let me see, Hologram for the King, Saving Mr. Banks, but you get the idea. And so under each movie, you can see like um, a lot of the major, you know, actors and, and directors and camera people and writers that worked on it. Uh, so a really great resource if you ever want to look up your, your favorite people. So let me go back to the presentation. Okay, so again, it has to be unique. It has appeal to a wide audience, meaning you want a lot of people to like your idea because if you're going to write uh, what they call a feature length movie, most movies are between 90, uh, 90 to 120 minutes, which means an hour and a half to two hours. OK, so if you're going to spend that much time writing a movie, you want to make sure that it's a movie that people are actually going to want to watch. <laughs> but um, you don't have to do that. A lot of the movies that I've created, they're all uh, short films. Uh, so a short film could be you know, four minutes. It could be as long as 25 minutes. Um, so um, and when you write your movie, each page equals usually equals one minute of time on the screen. And then of course you wanna be able to easily explain it in one sentence. So if we were to go back to Tom Hanks, for example, and uh, let's see, if we go to Castaway, that was a really great movie. I don't know if you ever had a chance to, to see it. Here's your log line. It's a one sentence description of the whole movie. A FedEx executive undergoes a physical and emotional transformation after a crash landing on a deserted island. And um, that, was a, that was a pretty amazing movie. And, and to see his transformation, to, like what he had to do as far as starving himself <laughs> to do this movie was, was incredible. Okay. And uh, what is a log line? Well, um, basically it's usually one line, no more, than, no more than two lines that describes someone, which is usually our hero, who wants something and which is the goal 
but is blocked by something, usually like an adversary, a, a bad guy or a disease or something. Okay, and um, the person kind of narrowed this down very easily. His name is Victor Pinheiro, and he is a writer and filmmaker. So that's before you even begin writing your movie and everything, you want to kind of get an idea as far as, you know, what you want to write. What's your story about? You know, what, what is the, the who is the hero? What do they want? And who's going to stop them? Or what is going to stop them from, from getting it? Or at least try to. Okay, so let's see if you can guess um, what movies these log lines are explaining. So in this example, you have two, two teenage cancer patients begin a life-affirming journey to visit a reclusive author in Amsterdam. Does anybody know? The Fault in Our Stars. Ooh, look at you. Wow. I'm really impressed. Yes, very good. And let's the go to saddest the movie ever. Saddest <laughs> movie ever. You know, I still haven't seen that. My wife said it was like absolutely amazing and very sad, but I am definitely going to watch that movie because I've been hearing a lot of great things about that. And it was based off of a very popular book, right? Yes, the funny thing is that I saw it at the library and it was really? a room of other teen girls and we were all crying at the same mm. time. And I always <laughs> joke because like if you had a video of us watching it, right? We would probably win like for the funniest video because we all were so we were so, so funny. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> all right, how about this movie? Mischievous grandmother lands in jail where she meets up of uh, meets a variety of mixed up characters any idea uh i think that's medea right Medea. yeah goes to good jail. job medea yeah. goes to jail and a very popular movie in the library system um i i don't know what happened to them but it looks like they are all missing <laughs> and all of our library branches which means it, it must have been really popular but um, yeah, the first time I was ever introduced to Medea was, uh, was when they did the plays. And um, I, I love the plays. And of course, I love the movies too. I was so sad when they recently did the, the very last uh, movie with Medea in it. I even watched all the Medea. Uh, anybody see the Medea Halloween movies? The uh, Boo? No? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. What did you think? Um, I didn't think they were as good as uh, previous you know, his previous one. I didn't want to say that, but I agree. <laughs> I, I think that the, the stories and some of the other actors weren't as good as, as the original Medea movies. Well, they were kind of thrown together or something. I don't know. Right. And uh, PJ says he has a Blu-ray of, um, of Medea Goes to Jail. Nice. Okay. You know, I still have yet to buy a Blu-ray player. I am going to do that one day because um, I've heard the... the the quality is absolutely amazing. But right now I don't have a television. I just watch movies on my computer and that's it. And I watch Netflix <laughs> and Amazon Prime. Okay, next one. After they are forced to live next to a fraternity house, a couple with a newborn baby do whatever they can to take them down. What movie is that? Five, four. Three, two, one. Neighbors, 2014. Had uh, Zac Efron and, and Rogan. Very funny movie if you ever get a chance to see it. I don't know, it's not appropriate for kids though. <laughs> How about this one? Life changes for Malcolm, a geek who's surviving life in a tough neighborhood after a chance invitation to an underground party leads him and his friends into a Los Angeles adventure. Any guesses? That was, oh, I'm sorry. I should have fixed that right here. That one is called Dope, and it was in 2015. A pretty popular movie when it came out. How about this one? A high school senior instigates a social pecking order revolution after find out that she has been labeled the designated ugly fat friend by her prettier, more popular. Yeah, yeah very good. I saw that movie. That was actually pretty funny. And that, that guy on the left, he is just, hysterical. <laughs> he's not afraid of making a complete fool of himself, but he's, he's very funny. All right, next one. A hopeless romantic ambivalent about his future in medical school falls for a hard luck young woman who doesn't believe in love. So here in this example, you have like complete opposites. He's completely romantic. She doesn't believe in love. What was this movie? That was a really good one. I enjoyed this one actually. I probably know this, but I can't think of it right now. 
Sun is also a star. Oh, you ever yes. get to see it? Gotta see yep. it. It's really good. The, the chemistry between these two actors are just phenomenal. And just the stories, it's just so much fun. It might even make you cry, but yeah, it's really good. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's basically what a log line is. And so um, I don't know for, for those of you that haven't written uh, a movie before and uh, even, let me see where we go. Where's my chat box? There we go. Even PJ, um, I don't know what kind of uh, techniques you use to come up with new ideas, but one technique you can try, there we go, is to take those three elements, such as your hero, what is their goal and their adversary from a story, uh, from a story that you enjoy, and then just keep changing it until you have a unique idea that you're excited about. Okay, so let me, um, and then of course, repeat this process at least 10 times. I mean, if you can, repeat it 100 times and then just take your top 10 best ones. I know that sounds like a lot, but you could probably do this um, you know, very easily once, once you start just playing with the different elements. And uh, I'll, I'll show you some examples. So for example, Pocahontas. What happens if you were to take Pocahontas and put her in space? You get Avatar. <laughs> you have like you have this this uh, you know this person that comes to this foreign land. They're trying to take all of their natural resources, but there's something about this place that is just absolutely magical, right? Uh, are you familiar with Shakespeare's Hamlet? Well, this is, uh, you might even recognize him. This is Tom Hiddleston. He was in that, uh, he was, he plays Loki in the, in the Avenger movies. And, but what if you changed it and add lions? So basically the same story, but with lions. I mean, and, and some, some differences as well. I'm not saying that it's absolutely the, the same, but the basic story plot line is very similar. And I don't know how many of you watching this know anything about Jaws. Uh, I believe this came out in the 70s. So, you know, basically you're, um, there's these people out in the ocean and there's this gigantic shark that is just attacking people. And it's very scary. You've seen Jaws? Oh, nice. Okay, good. But what happens if you take Jaws in space and you get uh, aliens? And matter of fact, um, the, the tagline for this movie, if I remember correctly, it says, uh, uh, when you're out in space, nobody can hear you scream. So it's the same situation. You're off like really far away from anybody that can help you. And then there's this big, scary creature with big, scary jaws that's trying to kill you. <laughs> but what if you take jaws and put them on land? You get something like Jurassic Park. So if you remember in the original Jurassic Park movie, you have, um, you have this special island that's in the middle of the ocean away from anybody that can help you. And um, you have this big, scary monster with big, scary jaws is trying to kill all the people that are on the island because they escape. OK, so again, you're just taking you're, you're taking the uh, the basic story. You have your hero, you have, you know, their wants. And then and then you have the antagonist, you know, the bad guy, you know, the, and they're all you're just kind of mixing it up and trying to see how you can create this unique idea. But, you know, honestly, is it really unique? Not necessarily, but your your take, your perspective, your your I, you know, your twist on it um, makes it unique. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? So pretty good. Okay. Next one, King Arthur. Uh, anybody familiar with it, with the old King Arthur stories with the sword and the stone and all that? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good, good, good. What if you were to take King Arthur, throw him in space and give him a lightsaber instead of a sword? So similar situation. You have this boy that's in the middle who is an orphan doesn't know his parents. He doesn't know his true identity and everything as far as, you know, what kind of power he actually has. He has this, this magical weapon that he's able to use and um, he has a mentor. So like in King Arthur, he has Merlin, right? This magical you know, mentor that helps him realize who he really is, which is a king. Whereas in Star Wars, he has uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi who shows him that he's this Jedi and he has this, this amazing power with the force, right? But what if you were to give them magic wands? King Arthur with magic wands. You have an orphan, doesn't know his parents. He has a mentor, a magical mentor, which is Dumbledore. And then he has this wand that chooses him because the wand chooses the wizard and you know helps him show who he really is because he just thinks he's a nobody. He's just this orphan that's being completely mistreated by his, you know, his uh, uncle and his aunt and his cousin. And but he has this mentor that shows him who he really is, this powerful person. The chosen one, kind of similar, uh, using similar tropes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
So you, you see a lot of these little similarities and you, you see that they still, they still seem to be pretty popular uh, throughout the ages and, and different generations. Okay, so how, how do you structure a typical uh, screenplay? You know, um, it, whether you're writing a hour and a half movie or if you're writing a five minute movie, you still usually have in any movie that you've ever watched in the theater or any Hollywood movie you've seen on DVD, they usually have th what they call three acts. There's three sections that, that the movie is broken up. So in the beginning, you have uh, the setup. And act two, you have the confrontation. You know, the, the, the hero is, is confronting whatever this big problem is. You know, it could be a person, it could be a thing, it could be a disease, it could be uh, a huge asteroid that's gonna destroy the, the planet. And at the end, hopefully everything is resolved. You know, the, 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 the main character has transformed in some way. And you know, everything, he's, he can never be the same after this whole, this whole uh, journey that he's going on. Okay, so let's break it down. So you have act one, this is called the setup. We meet the main characters, we learn about the major conflict that will keep us glued to the screen. This is where, the, where we get prepared for the journey to come. Okay, now between, okay, so like here's a great example, Harry Potter. So Harry Potter, he's an orphan who lives under the stairs with his aunt and uncle and cousin who all treat him very poorly, right? We get to know who he is and, and he's, we know that he's the main character. Okay, plot point one. Okay, so this is between act one and act two. So before he went, before he transitions, something crazy happens, some kind of twist, some major change happens that forces the hero to go on his journey. So what happened in Harry Potter? If you've seen the movie, you know that on his 12th birthday, this big half giant named Hagrid gives Harry an invitation to attend Hogwarts, this school of witchcraft and wizardry. Matt, he's like, no, you've got to be kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm just Harry. I'm nobody. And he's like, no, Harry. He's like, you're, you know, if you ever didn't, you ever uh, didn't think or made something happen that you couldn't explain. He's like, you're a wizard. And so that's, that's that first plot point that, that throws him into this journey and there's no turning back. Okay. Act two. So this is what they call the confrontation. So now the main characters are on their journey and the main conflict is in full motion. So whatever the big challenges or challenge, challenge or challenges, because it could be more than one, is in full motion. Okay, so in this example of Harry Potter, um, now he's over at Hogwarts, he's having all these amazing experiences, he's, he's learning how to go uh, play Quidditch, um, he's, he's learning about this guy, Professor Snape, who doesn't seem to like him very much, and then he notices, or at least he believes, he's trying to get past this big three-headed dog, who's trying to, and he's trying to steal something that's top secret, that it's guarding, right? So that's in Act 2. Okay, and then you have something called the midpoint. This is the middle of the story. This is where a major change in the goal causes the hero to pursue it in a different way. So in the example of Harry Potter, during his Quidditch match, uh, Harry's broom goes crazy. He starts shaking and everything, tries to throw him off. And then Hermione, she thinks Professor Snape is actually trying to cast a spell on the broom in order to kill him, right? Now it's got like really serious and really scary. So she goes over underneath the bleachers and she sets his cloak on fire uh, with her wand. So that way he can break eye contact and Harry can save himself. So that's the midpoint. Okay, and then you have your plot point two. This is like the second major change in the story where the hero's plan has failed and just look like there's no hope. I mean, you, you think it's that's the end for the hero, but you know, hopefully he stays alive or she stays alive and, and will continue to the end. Okay, so in Harry Potter, he encounters Voldemort. Who is this person? He is the evil wizard who killed his parents. Matter of fact, he's so evil that people won't even say his name. They call him he who shall not be named um, out in the Forbidden Forest. I believe he was drinking the blood of a unicorn just to stay alive. And then in this moment, Voldemort nearly kills Harry Potter, but then this big centaur, what was his name, Perenz? Uh, he ends up saving him. And then in Act 3, we have what's called the Resolution. The hero and the adversary come face to face for the final conflict and or the hero must face his greatest fear. So hopefully all of the unanswered questions from the beginning of the movie have been answered at this time. So in Harry Potter and the search for the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry confronts the villain, or at least who he, you know, he thought was the villain, who has been helping Voldemort. And it turns out to be Professor Quirrell, not Professor Snape. So he was wrong the whole time. So and um, uh, Professor Quirrell tries to kill Harry, but Harry kills uh, Professor Quirrell. And then Voldemort's spirit flees away because he doesn't have a body to, to attack Harry anymore. OK, so um, before I continue, um, how are we doing? Let me, let me stop sharing for a second. Any questions so far? Oh, we had another, uh, another guest. 
So do you see do you see uh, do you see all these examples of how like you know a popular Hollywood movie is is broken into these three acts? Pretty pretty simple. So um, is there any other uh, movie that you would like for me to break down in the three acts? Has anybody ever seen um, Back to the Future? Yes. You, you've seen that Back to the Future? Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so let's let's go back. I'm gonna share my screen one more time. If I could break this down, well, I have not. I did not prepare this, so I'm gonna see if I can actually get it down. All right, so act one, we meet the main characters, right? So um, you have Marty McFly, and um, he's <laughs> he's the son of, of a dad who, who's kind of a coward, right? And uh, he has this crazy friend. He's this uh, the scientist who just invented a time machine with a uh, in a vehicle. And so, but then there's these these uh, these uh, terrorists that um, want to come after and, um, and, and kill, they end up killing Doc with a, with a machine gun. So um, he jumps in the car and he drives at 85 miles an hour, I think it is. And then he ends up accidentally going back in time. What is it like 1965, 1955? I forget which, which year it was. And he's stuck there. So that's the setup. That's actually, oh, I went too far. Okay, so we, we meet him and um, you know he's, he's kind of, uh, he, he loves music. He doesn't really take school very seriously. But then later on, we have the first plot point. And that's when the terrorists come and they kill Doc. And so Marty jumps into the, uh, the car and he goes back in time. So now there, he's, he's forced to go into this journey. There's no turning back because he's 30 years in, into the past. Okay, and then you have the confrontation. So because he went into the past, he messed up his history. And um, his father was supposed to uh, meet his, his mom, but his mom ends up meeting Marty instead, which is messed up because now his mom falls in love with him and, and he can't tell his mom that he's from the future, right? And so now he has to really scramble to um, you know, figure out how to get them back together so that way he doesn't disappear um, because they never actually you know, get married and have children. Okay, and then the midpoint. Uh, what was what would be the midpoint um, in this? Um, Marty, I would let me see. I'm trying to remember um, the absolute middle point. Um, would that be okay? So you have you have the bad guy, you have Biff, and everything, and so you have like all this this confrontation that's going on, and Marty is realizing that um, the people and his his uh, siblings and the photograph are starting to disappear. So the longer that that Marty um, you know stays in the past. Uh, the more likely it is that he's going to disappear too, and he's not going to exist. So that was the midpoint. So things get like really serious. So he's trying really hard to get his dad to ask his mom out to the dance. And so the, <laughs> the way he finally convinces his dad to do so, he dresses up like an alien from some comic book from the 1950s and says, I will melt your brain if you don't ask her to the dance. So now he's really motivated, right? <laughs> And then plot point two, a second major change in the story where the hero's plan has failed and it looks like there's little hope. So um, they finally get to the dance. He, you know, his, um, the, was it uh, the mom still wants to go to the dance with Marty? And so he thinks he can still make it work. So he's going to, he make this plan with, with his dad and he's like, okay, um, you're going to knock me. I'm going to do something really bad to her and you're going to knock me out and you're going to be her hero. She's going to fall in love with you. And that's the, you know, you're going to get married and everybody's going to be happy ever after, right? But it goes wrong because Beth, the bad guy, shows up and he ruins everything. And um, and so now Marty, you know, he's he's playing music, but he's starting to fade away, like his hand is disappearing. And so this is where you think he's actually going to die, and he's not going to be able to make it at the end. And it looks like there's no hope. And then of course you have the resolution. Um, finally, his dad gets some courage and he knocks he knocks Biff out. And then he really is uh, his mother's hero. And they finally have a dance and they kiss. And then he comes, you know, his, his hand comes back. And then the photograph that had his siblings where they're all disappearing, they all come back and then everybody lives happy after and he goes back to the future. And of course he changed the future because now his dad was like this courageous kind of person. Okay, so do you see how that worked out as far as the three different acts? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Any questions so far? That was pretty good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was like off the top of my head. <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in years, but now I want to go back just to make sure I did it properly. But that's basically, you know, the, the basic 3X structure. <laughs> okay, so um, if you're kind of new to screenwriting, it's very tempting just to start writing it everything you know you'd start writing you know uh you know where it starts you know who the main character is and you start writing dialogue and stuff like that but as a generalization it's usually a better idea to start from the biggest idea to the smallest elements of the screenplay so what do i mean by that so think about the overall story 
you know, remember how I was telling you about the log line? It's like one line that describes the whole movie. Okay, how do you want it to begin? How does it end? So in Harry Potter, you know, he starts off as an orphan and he comes out as this magical wizard and he sees a, quite a bit of a hero, actually, because he confronted this one wizard that everybody's terrified of. Um, what does Marty, Marty McFly want in Back to the Future? Uh, well, usually they have like two needs, right? And yeah, for every movie, every main character has two needs. They have an internal goal and they have an external goal. So um, his external goal is that he needs to get back to the future and he needs to get his dad to fall in love with his mom so he doesn't disappear. But internally, he 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 wants courage. You know, he, he wants to be seen as, as brave and courageous and everything, which is why they have, if you ever seen Back to the Future, every time somebody calls him chicken, he freaks out. And so he wants to do something foolish just to prove that he's not a chicken. He's like, what's the matter, McFly? Are you chicken? He's like, nobody calls me chicken. <laughs> and so he ends up doing something really stupid just because somebody called him chicken. And so at the end of the movie, he wants to show that he's, you know, he's brave. That's his internal struggle. That's his internal, uh, one of his internal desires. Okay. And then, so after you get your overall story, how does it begin? How does it end? Um, think about your characters. Who are the main people um, that are going to drive the story forward? So in you know Harry Potter, you have you know Harry, who's the hero. You have Voldemort, who's who's mega villain. But then you have Professor Quirrell, who's also a villain. Um, and then you have like his uh, Harry Potter's best friends. You have uh, Hermione. You have um, uh, Ron. You know, so think about you know what characters you need. You don't have to have a ton of characters. You can have you know two, three, or four characters, and and that's it. That's all you need. Okay, and then scenes, you know, you want to make it, uh, you want to make it interesting. A lot of people, um, when they're just starting out, you know, every scene, you know, happens like at home, uh, in, a, in, a, in a bedroom or in a classroom and stuff like that. Mix it up, you know, see, see what would make it a little bit more interesting. Um, if you had, um, if you took a Jurassic Park and, uh, okay, great, you have it on the island and everything, but what if you were to put that dinosaur in the middle of New York City? Um, that was part two. <laughs> you know, just mix up the scene and see what would make it a little bit more interesting. If you took this character, whether it's the hero or the villain, and you put them in some place they probably shouldn't be in, the story kind of forms itself because now you have all these people acting, you know, reacting to this thing that shouldn't be there, or maybe they should be there. Who knows? Um, you know, and then like for example, Harry Potter is like he's in a normal neighborhood, very boring life. Nobody even notices him or, or treats him properly. But now you threw him in a in a in a school of wizard in, in um, wizardry and witchcraft. Um, so that makes it really interesting. What is he going to learn? What is he going to do? What does he encounter? What kind of creatures is he going to meet? So um, he learns how to fly a broom, and he's playing a, what looks like a game of soccer but on brooms, um, you know, he meets these, these, uh, you know, these giants and these fairies and this mischievous, mischievous creatures and things. So the scene really can make a difference. So if you have uh, Jaws and you throw them in space, what's gonna happen in space? You're on another planet. So you can really play with, um, you know, what kinds of things are out there because nobody knows what's out there. So you can really have fun with that. Okay, and then you have dialogue, just like the general dialogue. So in each scene, Okay, you can't just have a scene just to have a scene. Like there has to be a reason why they're there. You know, what do they need to talk about? You know, you know, to go from point A to point B and everything, what does each scene do for that? Um, so like, for example, in Back to the Future, um, they have this scene out in the mall parking lot with the car. Uh, and the reason why they're having the scene there is because he needs to do a test to see whether or not the time machine works. And it does. The time machine works, boom, and then he's already back, you know, um, you know, he goes back in time in 1965 or whatever it is. Well, it takes place initially in 1985, so it's got to be 30 years back. So it's, yeah, 1955, I believe. So that's the purpose of that scene, to uh, prove that the, 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 um, um, that the time machine works and to throw him into the, you know, directly into the story, which is basically the past. And then um, you focus on the description. You know, you describe you describe the characters. You describe you describe the scene. You know what's going on. Is it the daytime? Is it the nighttime? Um, sometimes that really makes a difference. Um, if you were to have a crime, for example, a crime scene, if they, is it more interesting if it's like early in the morning, in the afternoon, or late at night? And usually, you know, the worst crimes happen late at night because there's less people, and you know, you can't see very well, and it's a lot more scary. And then finally, that's when you focus on the words. And the words is like the last thing you type um, as far as, you know, what the character specifically is saying, you know, the characters are specifically saying to each other in each scene. Okay, so that makes sense. So you start from biggest to smallest. The smallest is the words. Don't worry about the words until you got the overall story.
Okay, so um, this is a um, next year, uh, actually, no, this year, actually. <laughs> uh, this year, this is uh, one uh, short film I'm gonna be working on. It's gonna be an animated movie. This is something I, I was trying to get made for a couple of years. Um, I contacted some um, animation schools uh, in Florida and I wanted to see if they would, I already wrote the movie. I had a, what they call a storyboard. Uh, does everybody know what a storyboard is? No, not really. Okay, so storyboard, after you write your story, each scene, you have like a little square, it's kind of like a comic book, um, like a comic book representation of your movie. And it, it's basically showing like a, a picture representation of what happens in each scene. Okay, um, so I, I took my my story and my storyboard and I went to these different schools and I asked I wanted to see if I can get some students to make it for me because I don't know anything about animation. So instead I, I found a different way that I'm going to use um, a creative way to use PowerPoint and I'm going to make this into a short movie. It's going to be maybe five minutes long. Okay, so my log line for Robot Superstar says in a future filled with robot servants, a lowly trash can robot must save the day when an alien predator threatens to kidnap his Hollywood action hero. So here's my protagonist, my hero. He's a trash can robot. And it, it's set in the future in Hollywood. And then you have this predator, um, this, you know, this predator alien um, who likes to collect the heads of robots because he just thinks they're great trophies to have. And then, of course, you have like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of robots. He's, you know, he's like the movie action star of the future because robots are, are just as famous now in the future as people. And so the trash can robot wants to be just like him, but this alien's gonna come and try to kidnap him and take his head as a trophy. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with any screenwriting software, but here are a couple of options that you might wanna consider. One of them uh, is, is uh, pretty pop, one of the most popular ones is called Final Draft. Uh, it looks like they're charging about $200 now. Um, I have an old version of this, and so it's no longer supported, which means I have to buy another one. <laughs> but um, it is a really great software, and it formats everything for you. And it has like a whole bunch of different, um, you know, uh, abilities to like, you know, uh, share it and everything, and a bunch of different resources to kind of give you tips and tools and stuff. Um, you have something called uh, Celtics. Celtics used to be free, um, but I guess because they've become so popular, now you can go ahead and subscribe and um, purchase it for 100, about $180. And then you have something also called Fade In. Fade In is also, they also claim that they are the Hollywood industry standard um, when it comes to screenwriting. And um, it's like less than half the price of Final Draft, which is really great. And then of course, if you understand how a screen screenplay should look like, um, you can just create your own screen, uh, your own little template using Microsoft Word. If you don't have Microsoft Word at home, you can come to the library, use our public um, uh, our public computers, and you can just access it for free. And I would recommend bringing uh, a USB drive. Do you know what a USB drive is, everybody? So let me stop sharing for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, basically this is a USB drive. It's a, it's a little memory stick. Uh, you want one that has uh, a lot of memory. And um, you know, anytime you, you come to the library and work in your screenplay, save it on here. And matter of fact, I even recommend backing it up on a second source. So um, every time you make changes and update your, your screenplay, maybe even email it to yourself so you have it in two different locations, just in case you ever drop this, lose it, or it's stolen. So let me go back to sharing my screen. There we go. And then finally, um, instead of using Microsoft Word, you could use Google Docs, okay, which is uh, very similar to Microsoft Word. Um, again, with these two, though, you're going to have to format it yourself, okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll see if I can find you a, a screenplay, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Okay, um, if you're looking for books that will give you a lot more, because this is just barely scratching the surface as far as how to write a screenplay. Um, you, can, um, you can get Save the Cat by Blake Snyder, very popular book. I actually have this in my collection at home. Um, another book uh, by a very you know, popular author, his name is uh, Sid Field, and his, his book is called Screenplay, The Foundations of Screenwriting. Um, this is an older book. I, I think this was like the late 90s and everything, but the, the elements and the lessons are still relevant today. I mean, the you know, that that format as far as like the three act structure and, and how to create like really interesting characters that hasn't changed much. So this is actually still a really good uh, book by Robert McKee called Story. Uh, this one is, is fairly newer. Um, it's called The Idea, Seven Elements of a Viable Story for Screen, Stage or Fiction. 
Uh, the Screenwriter's Bible, I believe the latest version is 2019. Um, a lot of these I, I know we don't have at the Belglade Branch Library, but I am going to see if I can get that corrected <laughs> today. And then um, this one called Your Screenplay Sucks and 100 Ways to Make It Great. Um, I know it's a funny title, um, but it is a pretty popular screenwriting uh, book that kind of uh, just gives you just some very honest uh, advice. <laughs> Okay, so if you ever want to uh, take a screenwriting class, you can go to Udemy on the library's website. This is, if you have a library card, this is something that you can access for free with your library card. So I will show you how to access that right now, as a matter of fact. So let me go ahead and switch back to, here we go. Are you able to see the library's website? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, wonderful, okay. So let me scroll down. So over here on pbclibrary.org, on the upper right hand side, you're going to hit this button that says research. It looks like a little uh, science beaker. And then you're going to scroll down to education. And over here on the right hand side, you have Udemy. Now, if, when you click on there, it's going to ask you to create an account. So you have to enter your email address create a password just like you would any other website. And then um, I would recommend, let me see, do I have this up? Ah, yes, when, once you sign in, you can go to the very top and type in screenwriting. And this is one that they have available. Learn to write movies, screenwriting step-by-step. Step. This is free because you have a library card and we have that database available on the library's website. So um, definitely check that out. It says this course includes four hours of on-demand on video. 18 downloadable resources. You can access it on your phone. And they even give you a little certificate of completion, which is actually pretty cool. So definitely, you know, check that out. This kind of shows you step by step all the different lessons you'll be learning. So you have, you know, uh, you have the introduction, you have the concept. We were talking about the hero and the you know, protagonist and the villain or antagonist, you know, themes, characters, structure. Remember, we we're talking about three acts. All right. Let's see what else over here. Okay, so those people that signed up for the class. So yes, that is a wonderful resource to have. Highly recommend you check it out. And I wanted to leave you uh, with a wonderful tip when it comes to screenwriting. Um, can you see this video? This is the key to yes. writing? Okay, great. This is one of my favorite movies called Finding Forrester. It came out in 2000. And uh, listen to what he says about the key to writing. I know writing, I don't want to. Socks inside out because socks are badly designed. The seams are on the inside, hurt the toes. In some cultures, it's considered good luck to be wearing something inside out. Do you believe that? No, but it's like praying. What do you risk? <laughs> and I keep go outside. How do you think those windows get cleaned? Now, about this professor of yours. How did it feel having him tell you what you can't do? Like he knew he was better than you. <laughs> sure. What you can do. I said the words to write for ourselves are always so much better than the words to write for others. All right, so um, I hope you're able to hear that okay. 
Um, but yeah, I re- that, um, that one scene, I know it sounds funny, that one scene really changed uh, my life when it came to writing, because I used to do that all the time. I would, I, would, I would start type, I would think a lot and everything, and I would keep editing as I'm writing. So like, my thoughts couldn't go all the way through, you know, as they were coming. And so um, from ap- after I watched that one scene, from now on, I just keep typing. I don't care if I misspell things or the grammar is bad or I forgot to put a period. I just keep writing while the, the idea is still fresh in my head and then go back and then start editing everything and using my brain. So he's saying, he's saying when you, when you start writing, first write with your heart. And then once you finish with that, go back and then edit it with your, with your head. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. Can you yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, yeah. I have a question. I know in the beginning you said you published an ebook, and I was kind of curious, how did you do that? <laughs> oh, that's a whole class all by itself. But I know <laughs> that's the next class. <laughs> okay, so all right, so let me let me share my screen one more time, and let me exit out of here. And um, but that is a very good question. Let me go over here. There is a great website called smashwords.com. Okay, so what is smashwords.com? Smashwords is a um, is a website where you can publish your own eBooks and what they will do, they will send it to uh, a bunch of major companies like Barnes and Noble, uh, Apple iTunes, uh, Sony, Kobo. Um, and then I've also uh, self-published on Amazon as well. So for example, if I go to Smash Roads right now and I type in my name. There we go, here I am. So this is who I am. This is my little biography over here. Um, you could put like your all of your social media uh, pages on here. If you have like a video that you created, just kind of introducing yourself, you could put that there as well. And then here's the, like all the different uh, eBooks um, I've published so far. I took out uh, Death of a Gas Guzzler because I published that back in 2012. But um, if you go to bn.com, I think it might actually still be there. Actually, no, 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 I take it back, Amazon. You can see the screen, okay? Yes. Okay, great. And I go to books. Death of a gas guzzler. There it is. So, um, yep, you could totally, you know, publish your own stuff. I would recommend that if you do decide to publish your own stuff, uh, make sure you have somebody professional um, review it and, and make it the best it can be. Um, I hired this one company that I don't know if it's still around anymore called allivy.net. And um, basically they only have people working for them that went to Ivy League schools like Harvard or Brown or, or something like that. And, um, and so I, I used my tax returns to pay them <laughs> because it was, it was a lot of money. Um, but this was, this was about, I think this book was about 10,000 words at least. So I don't know, maybe 150 pages or something. Um, so I, I had them edit the whole book and everything before I, I published it. And um, see, it's one thing when you publish your own book, it's a whole different story on how to promote your book. Um, so that's a whole different skill set as far as uh, marketing, learning how to market your stuff. Um, and so that's uh, maybe that's an, actually if you go on Udemy, you probably could, you know what, let me go over here. Let me see. Do they have something on Udemy? So uh, book marketing, Is that a curiosity. OK, uh, product manager, 15, let's see, technical writing, successful events. There you go. Write and publish your first nonfiction book on the site. OK, so there's that. Oh, one more thing about uh, Smashwords. I almost forgot. If you want to learn how to do that yourself, um, if you go over here where it says how to publish on Smashwords, they scroll down. I'm trying to see what they have here. They have like these free ebooks that you can download. Sign up. Okay, here we go. Smashwords style guide. So you click on there, you're going to create an account, uh, a free account with them, and you're going to download that ebook and you're going to read every page and absorb everything. I know it's about 75 pages, it sounds like a lot. But once you get that down, all those rules down on how to do it properly, um, it really um, it, it really makes a difference um, because you want your readers to be able to have a great experience when they're reading it. So if you don't do it just right and they can't read your book properly on their iPad and smartphone and laptop, then then they're probably not going to keep reading your book. So make sure you follow those, those rules that they have there. It's free and you can download that and you can read it on your phone or wherever wherever you prefer. 
Hey, does that answer your question? Yes. yes so what yes. I did after I after I wrote that book, um, The Death of a Gas Guzzler, I made a short movie out of it. And I, I think it was, how long was it? I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes long. And then I got into a film festival and they asked me um, if I wanted to, you know, speak to the audience and, and talk about, you know, alternative energy, you know, different fuels and things like that. That was this one right here. Um, so, you know, try it, you know, let, your, let yourself make mistakes um, because you will, <laughs> especially as, as a new writer, um, you know, get lots of feedback from people that know, you know, what they're talking about. So um, I, I believe one of you said you're, you're taking classes already. So you probably have a professor that, you know, really or a teacher that really knows what they're doing. And um, in the chat box, if you could please take a look at that link right there, let us know what you thought about today's class. Um, and be as honest as possible. I promise you won't hurt my feelings, but I hope this was useful for you. And um, I just want to say a big, uh, great big thank you to the friends of the library who made our programs possible. Um, please consider um, becoming a member if you haven't done so already. Uh, they're the ones that help make a lot of our programs possible. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns, sarcasm? <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. Um, yes. Because you said that you got to be in all those different films. So did you... Yes. But you said you also lived in like LA at one point. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So have you have, have you done? I know you said you came out with that one this year. Have you? How did you find out about all those different like casting calls? Uh, well, that's that's a great question. So let me go ahead and share my screen again. All right. So this one I I wrote, produced, directed. I did that myself. So I didn't have to go to a casting call. This one I also I wrote it, I directed it, and I was the main actor for this as well. Um, this one um, was a, a movie that uh, a friend of mine wrote. Um, he, he and I took acting classes together and he was my, my partner for a scene that we had to do. And so he asked me if I would be on this movie with him. And the people that the filmmakers that worked on that movie also wrote this one. So um, Florida is a, has a very small film community. So you want to be nice to everybody, everybody you work with, no matter who it is, whether they're the ones grabbing the coffee or they're, they're behind the camera or whoever it is, be nice to everybody because you never know where you're going to get your next job, um, especially if you want to do this for a living and you want to make money doing it. So um, the reason why I got into this last one is because the guys that worked on this, the third film um, uh, you know, they, they really liked what I was doing and they asked me if I would be one of the main characters for, for this. But as far as casting calls go, wow. <laughs> Are you currently taking acting classes right now? Well, I'm not taking acting classes, but I'm definitely like interested in acting. I've only okay. been in like plays, you know what I mean? Like at Okay, cool. Well, um, first things first, I recommend that you take acting classes, uh, professional acting classes. It doesn't have to be at a college or, a, I mean, if you could do it in high school, that's great. Um, but there's, there's these, there's classes that are available that you can do it online. Uh, matter of fact, I think even on Udemy, I want to see if they have some acting uh, options. Let me go back over here. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Here we go. Udemy. And I'm curious, acting. Do we have any free acting classes? Uh, to the adventure, artificial intelligence, voice training. Okay, so that's one form of acting um, as far as you know, voice training, because you, your, your body is your instrument. And so when you're, you're learning to act and everything, it's not just about emotions and everything, it's learning how to train your voice. And, and you, when, when you think about your favorite movies and your favorite actors, what do they do with their voice? You, know, you, you, you don't want it to be boring where this is what I'm going to teach you today and my voice is going to stay the same and I'm going to fall asleep, make everybody fall asleep. No, you probably really like certain characters because their voice changes and, and it, you know so this this is a really good skill to to uh, keep in mind um let me just learn sign language media training <clears throat> uh, business chinese let me see let me go on the second page real quick Oh, voiceover training. Okay. So um, I know um, an actress, she's actually working in a, uh, as a voiceover actor um, in a lot of video games, uh, commercials, and some cartoons. So that's one form of acting um, that you might want to learn for free on. on um... Oh, here we go. Take lessons from an actor. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, I guess not a whole lot of acting classes on Udemy, but that's okay. Um, there is one source um, that you might want to check out. Um, her name is Wendy Elaine Wright.
Right, um, Holly, I think it's called Hollywood Circle or something. Okay, here we go, the Hollywood Winner Circle. Um, she is really great. I'm gonna go ahead and put that link in the text box. Um, she has a, um, a YouTube page, a Facebook page, and she gives out a lot of free advice uh, that you can check out. And then eventually, if you want to take an online acting course with her, um, you know, she, you can you can do that uh, if you choose. Uh, but she also what, what's great about her, she also recommends like a ton of other um, actors as well. And she's written a book, a how to how to be an actor like anywhere in the country. You don't have to necessarily live in L.A. or New York or Atlanta. I don't know if you realize this or not, but a lot of movies are being made in Atlanta, Georgia right now. And, uh, and that including a lot of the, the Marvel movies uh, that are being made. If you look at the credits all the way to the end, you know how you get those little extra you know video clips at the end of the credits of Marvel movies? Well, if you'll notice, a lot of them say Georgia, and that's because they were filmed in Atlanta. But you don't have to be in any one of those three locations just to work. I mean, you can work here in Florida, you can work in, um, I'm going to be actually moving to Virginia in about less than two weeks. And uh, they're making movies there in, in Richmond. Uh, if you saw the latest uh, Wonder Woman movie, that was actually filmed in Richmond, Virginia. Um, so you could do that. Um, you can work in voiceover acting. Um, you could do theater, like you said. Um, there is, um, uh, what, what city do you, do you live in? Just out of curiosity, Eleni. Yeah, I, I live in Palm Beach Gardens. Palm Beach Gardens, okay. Um, you, chances are you probably have a theater nearby and uh, they may actually offer um, classes for, for kids. And over in um, Palm Beach and City Place, there's that, that comedy place um, there. And I believe they also have uh, classes that they offer. Um, I, I think it's every Monday night or Tuesday night. I, I, I didn't get the chance to actually do it, but I was actually going to do that because one of the skills that you need as an actor, especially if you want to be in film or television are what they call improv skills. So do you know what that is? Yeah, the improv, yeah. Okay. So improv That's is like, like it's, it's not necessarily written. It's not something that you have memorized. Yeah, Sometimes even, even in the, I'm sorry? I just said on the spot. Yeah. Right, like right on the spot and everything. You're given a certain situation. It's like, okay, you're both, uh, you're both at uh, at a um, at a motorcycle store, and um, the motor this motorcycle that everybody wants. There's only one left. Go. <laughs> and then and then you have to like off the top of your head. I was like, why do you want this motorcycle, and why why should you have it, and not the other person? And so that you know that's like the whole scene comes out. Um, anybody watch uh, Fast and the Furious? <clears throat> The, the Fast and the Furious movies. Well, it has. Um, there's this one scene uh, where The Rock he he shows up at Vin Diesel's house, and uh, this one guy tries to make fun of him. He's like, uh, "Everybody hide your baby oil," you know, because um, you know The Rock's skin is very shiny, right? <laughs> And that wasn't actually in the movie script. He's like, you know, better hide your baby oil. And then The Rock says, well, better hide that big forehead. And um, if you notice, <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? Um, Ludacris, he's actually, he had water in his mouth and he spit it all out. And, and that was a real reaction. That was completely improvised. That wasn't written. Uh, and so it's, it's really important to have those improv skills because when you do auditions, they might actually put you in that kind of situation. It's like, okay, um, you're in a zoo and all the tigers escaped go. <laughs> and so, you know, how do you do that right there on the spot, you know? So that, that is a good skill to, to have, uh, you know, work on your voice, um, work on, work on uh, skills. Um, do you have any talents? You know, can you dance? Can you play music? Um, can you paint? You know, there's, there's not one that's better than the other. Do you know any other types of languages, for example? Um, I know just enough Spanish to know when people are talking about about me, but um, <laughs> if you give me a bunch of dialogue, I can memorize it in Spanish or even Italian for that matter. I lived in Italy when I was a kid for three and a half years. Um, I also taught English in China for a whole year. So, uh, so I can speak a little bit of Mandarin Chinese. So, um, you know, those are kind of skills that you want to put on your actor's resume. You know, what makes you unique? I have a good friend that I used to do martial arts with and he would do something called tricking um, or trick kicking rather. So he was the kind of guy that can do all these crazy flips and spin like a million times when he was doing his kicks and looked really awesome. And he would go to, he would actually get hired to go all around the country just to do these crazy stunts, you know, with his kicks. And then he got hired uh, to be uh, Raphael and then uh, nin the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. And he also, um, to, to, to do the stunts, you know, like you'll, you'll see a lot of them where they're up in the air and they're flipping and they're spinning and they're doing their kicks. He plays Raphael and he even got to be uh, one of the transformer, um, transformer robots uh, in one of the action scenes. So even though you don't know that it's him, you'll see his name in the credits, but his, he has that special talent of, of learning how to kick. 
So that one talent helped him get into this major movie. And because of that, now he has a, I don't know, a hundred thousand dollar house in Los Angeles somewhere. Um, so, you know, he's doing really well for himself. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> wow. So, you know, work on your talents, you know, everything. A lot of people, they just focus on acting, 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 acting. No, 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 no. Have a life, get a life, go, go meet people, you know, find out how people, you know, you know, like normal people work because you never know what you might be able to pull from these different experiences that will help you in a future movie or in a future play, you know, so that way you can, um, cause acting, a lot of people say, well, acting is just a professional lying. Uh, no, that's not true. Um, if anybody, if anybody is ever taking acting classes, actors are actually trying to find the truth in that character. And they're, they're, they're trying to use their life experiences to make that character true. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not a lie. They're actually, you know, empathizing with that character situation. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Um, there, there's a lot of online resources. Um, I would recommend checking local resources, whether it's a theater or uh, maybe even that comedy club over in Palm Beach uh, County. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options. Yes, there. Thank you. You yes. have so much information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <don't talk> <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so I, I hope you found this useful. I hope you had fun. Um, again, there's that link uh, for our survey. Please let us know what you thought about the class. Um, at the end of class, we'll have the recording. I'll go ahead and email it to everybody that signed up. And then uh, any other questions? I don't know. I just want to know how you live. How you live in your time. So great. What's that? I have oh, my question. mom is here. Is she yes, I've watching? been listening. You did a great class, by the way. I was writing oh, and taking notes for her. I'm <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, she's she. I have two girls. The one uh, Al Alani is actually here. She's actually ten. But the one Angel that's speaking to you, she's twenty one. And oh, um, great. yeah, and she sings and does art and everything. So she's very interested in all this. That's why when nice. I saw her, I signed her up. But um, but I was just curious. You said you're at Bell Glade um, Library, and I wonder, do you live in Bell Glade? Because that's <laughs> no, actually, I, I live in I live in Wellington, actually. Um, okay. So I okay. commute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's, wow. it's okay. Very okay. peaceful. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. I was like, Bell Glade, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have three library branches out here. We have one in Pahokee, one in South Bay, and here in Bell Glade. And uh, it's actually, if you've ever been here, it's, it's a really nice branch. Uh, we have like these huge murals um, that a local artist uh, painted for us. And uh, we have a really big teen room. They have the, their own public computers. Uh, we have a ton of, um, of uh, study rooms uh, where not every library has that. Some of them only have like two study rooms. We have, I mean, we have, I think we have like five or six. Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's a, it's a really nice area out here. I really like it. It's very quiet. Um, I, I wish we had a lot more people coming, but because of COVID, you know, it is yeah. what it is. Um, but the, the drive is very peaceful. It's like nothing but farmland when you drive out here. Yeah. So I, I, I get to listen to a lot of audiobooks on on a cloud library using the, using the library's app. Yeah. I was actually, my parents used to have some houses in Sebring, Florida, and, and uh -huh. I was driving home one time and I got lost somehow, went the wrong road. And this is before GPS. And I ended up in Bell Plain. I was having a, a, a hard problem just finding a place to ask somebody for directions. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> it was like this little bitty gas station. And then right. the, um, the Burger King there. And right. Yes, but I did. I was on, used to be on a clogging team. And I, I clogged out there for the, what do they call it? It's something, the Black Black uh, Gold Festival or something like that. It's oh, yes. Yes, 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 because yes. I know what you're talking about. I, I forget what the exact title was, but yeah, it just happened not that long ago. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that was really nice, actually. A lot of people turned out over there, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and no, then, I find the people here like just really nice just in general. I mean, they're just, they're yeah. so appreciative of like all the help that, you know, that we give them and stuff. And, and uh, it's, just, it's a whole different dynamic, you know, and so yeah. uh, we try to cater uh, the needs of the community and, and make our programs for that. But now that we have virtual, now we have like no walls. So we have, I've had like trivia games where people from Pennsylvania and Colorado come tune in. I'm like, how did you hear about our program? Oh, but yeah. awesome. You know? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. And then what, what, I'm just curious, why are you moving to Virginia just for your acting career or just uh, well, um, I, I uh, my was it in the end of 2019, my wife and I actually, uh, we ended up there by accident, we were coming from DC and a hurricane was coming up the, the coast of Florida, like right in smack in the middle of Florida. So we, we couldn't go back home. So for like right. a week, and we went uh, sightseeing, we absolutely fell in love with the place. And um, so we decided that's where we want to uh, establish our permanent roots. So I'm going to be the same thing. I'm, I'm going to be a children's librarian up there. Um, but also, um, I, I, I don't know if I briefly mentioned, um, I have a background in martial arts. I've done it on and off since I was four years old. It's something my entire family has been involved in. And uh, there is a Korean master that I want to train with uh, because one of my 
goals that I've had for a long, long time is like, I really want to compete in the Olympics, um, Paris Olympics 2024. Um, I tried, I tried a, a while ago in Coral Springs with this Korean master there and um, I ended up breaking my foot. <laughs> there was a, there was a new black belt that walked into the class and I, I knew he was stronger than me, but I knew it was faster. And so oh. he, he tried to power me with his back leg and I thought I could get him in the chest, but he blocked with his shin and I broke oh. my foot on his shin. And that was pretty oh. much it for a long time. And um, when you have something that you're so excited, so passionate about, like whether it's acting or screenwriting or martial arts um, and you don't do it, I, your, your soul really tells you like, man, it's like, if you don't do this or you don't give it another try, you're going to regret it the rest of your life. So oh. whether I make it or fail, it doesn't matter. I just, I, I really want to give this one more try. Yeah, and, and that um, there. What's great about Virginia is that there's a lot more. When you buy um, a property, um, there's a, you can get a lot more land for your dollar. And uh, we would like to have like a little mini farm, like a little farm rescue, um, a rescue um, farm uh, sanctuary, um, because there's a couple of a lot of places that are like that up there. And one of them is like this horse rescue place, and my wife would like to volunteer for them. So we have a bunch of reasons why we're going to that part of Virginia. Wow. You're such an interesting person. Wow. I, I, some, well, thank you. I, I, I think I'm ridiculous, but no, <laughs> I am never great. bored. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're great. You're so interesting. You're, you're, thank you. you're like, like, not many people are like that adventurous to just be like, <laughs> what am I going to do? And, you know. Well, I mean, because like, I mean, I admire people that know what they want to do, you know, from like childhood and everything. And I've never been that kind of person. I've never had like a somebody I can look up to that I want to be just like them for the rest of my life. I just find this whole world fascinating. There's so many things in this world to experience, you know, and I was very lucky because my father was in the army for 20 years and we moved every three years. And, and it was sweet. We had like a whole different culture, a whole different environment. We lived in Italy, Germany, Hawaii, New Mexico. And so it's like a whole different world out there when you live in these different kinds of places and so I'm, I'm really grateful to have those experiences yes that's great oh my goodness very good well, I, I hope you i hope this was helpful i hope you pursue it you know I, I hope to hear that you've written you know like your first movie and stuff like that and and maybe even make it you know um, um oh uh, there, there's other thing I, did i include screenwriting contest oh, i forgot to include screenwriting contest um when you have a screenplay that you're proud of there's a lot of screenwriting contests that are out there that you can submit them to and you could even get you know cash prizes um if you have a feature length movie you might even get a production company that is interested in uh, purchasing it from you so like for example i took this uh professional screenwriting course called screenwriting you i'll even write it down here Um, they have a variety of different um, classes. Uh, they have like a month long program and then they have the professional ones that last like uh, 12 months. I think that's called the pro series. And then they have, um, after you do the pro series, you can do what's called a master class, which I think takes over a period of a year. And when you're done, you will have what they call a high concept uh, screenplay that you could, or maybe even two, if, if you're really um, ambitious. <laughs> and then you can pitch it to Hollywood, you know, producers and stuff in these different contests. And if you pay a little bit of extra money, I find uh, that's what I did with my first comedy screenplay. Um, you could actually pay extra money to have people give you feedback because a lot of times you'll just submit it and you either win or you don't and that's it and you, you lost your money um but if you pay extra money you can have somebody give you detailed feedback as far as you know what was great and what was bad about it okay so oh did you um since you guys are still here with me thank you i'm honored um do you want to see what a sample screenplay should look like yeah yeah okay great okay so i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and uh, Wendy Elaine Wright, she's absolutely amazing. This, her generosity in terms of sharing all that free information is phenomenal. So find her on YouTube and subscribe to her channel. I, I recommend it. I, the library does not endorse any particular company. This is just my personal experience with her. I was actually listening to one of her videos this morning. Um, she, she brings on people that are working actors and they talk about their experiences. Um, she has people that are children, people that are adults, people starting acting like in their forties. Um, so let me see, let me go over here. And go to my USB. Here we go. Screenwriting you. And uh, um, okay, so let me take um, actual screenplays that have been made already. So let me see um, Avatar or even Back to the Future. Let's do Back to the Future. So I'm going to open that up with. Actually, no, no, no. I don't want to open up on that browser. I want to open up it as a PDF. So here, Adobe Acrobat Reader, voila. Okay, great. Get this out of my way. 
Zoom always has all these little windows. Okay, so um, this is uh, your, your cover page or your title page. Um, it's, it's nothing fancy. You don't need to use fancy font or anything like that. You have the title, who it was written by, and then you'll usually put like uh, what draft because you never, 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 never want to take the first version of your screenplay and submit it to a contest to try to get it sold. Um, you're probably going to have to rewrite your, your screenplay at least four to 10 times. I know it sounds like a lot, <laughs> but you always want to only put your best work in contests. Okay. So in this version that I downloaded, this is the fourth draft of Back to the Future. Okay. So now over here, you have uh, basically the scene. This is the location where it takes place. If you notice, it's all in caps. All the letters are in caps. So it starts off with INT, for example. Uh, INT means it's interior. It's inside of some kind of uh, building. So in this case, it's inside of a high school classroom. And then it'll have like a little hyphen. Okay, what time of day? Is it, is it morning? Is it day? Is it night? Um, they're not very specific. They just said day. So it, it doesn't matter what time of the day, just as long as it's day. So um, here you have like your little description. It says a weird flickering white light strobes the screen accompanied by projector noise and off-screen control voice. Okay, so why do they capitalize these words that sound like sound effects? Because this is what they call a, a production screenplay. So whenever there's something that requires a sound effect, they, 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 they make that stand out by putting it all in caps. With you, you um, if you're just doing this for yourself, you probably wouldn't make everything in caps. So don't worry about memorizing that. Okay, and then over here where it says control voice, um, this is where the character's name would be. So if it's, you know, Marty McFly or if it's, you know, Susie, Johnny, whoever, that's always going to be in the middle and you're going to have it in caps and then you have their actual dialogue. Okay, so um, you the description, um, the scene, there's all those are justified to the left. If you notice, everything's off to the left, whereas the uh, dialogue and the character's name is always centered. OK, so um, they're describing more what's going on in detail. And then let me see. Boom, 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 boom. OK, this this is another scene heading. Um, so sometimes they have something called a um, um, like a series of shots. Um, I'm having a, a brain fart, right? <laughs> as far as what they call it. Um, where is it? Uh, Stand by. Go. Is PJ still with me? PJ is still here? Yes. Awesome. Okay. PJ, what is this called when they have like a series of, of shots and everything? They're just kind of going from one scene to the next, just to try. There's no dialogue going on. Um, montage, a montage. There we go. Where they, um, where they go from one scene to the next. So they show like all the different things are happening from this scene to that scene. And it's very slow. Where'd you go? New message. Beat me to it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, over here, uh, if you notice that they, they capitalize the person's name, typically they only capitalize a person's name when it's the first time you're introducing uh, them. So in this example, this is the first time they're being introduced. So they're going into detail as far as, um, you know, what this person is. Um, Miss Wood, she's 45 years old. Um, sometimes I'll go into a lot more detail. You know, she, she looks like your typical old librarian, for example, you know, from the 1940s. Uh, so, you know, they'll, they'll go into kind of detail just to kind of give you an idea of what the characters look like, which is really helpful for, from a, when, they're talking, when they're talking about thinking about casting somebody, because um, they want to find somebody who kind of naturally looks like that. But you were asking earlier about casting choices. So maybe the role calls for a boy that's your age, and maybe he has to be Spanish or something like that. But you know what? You really feel strongly that, you know what? I could play that role and we can do something different. And sometimes you might actually get away with that. And they're like, you know what? You know, the casting directors, I never thought of it that way, but you know what? Let's hold on to her because she's a really good actress. And, you know, maybe she's not right for this role, but maybe she'd be good for another role. But maybe if they really like you, they'll talk to the directors like, hey, we have somebody who we think uh, would do really well, even though it says we want a boy who's Hispanic and, you know, or whatever, you know, kind of thing. It's like, you know, really look at her and tell, tell us what you think. Matter of fact, if any of you ever seen um, The Karate Kid, um, has anybody seen The Karate Kid just out of curiosity, except for the mom? I know the mom probably has. Yes, we've all seen. Yep. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so um, the guy who plays Mr. Miyagi, they initially did not want him um, because he was actually a comedian from uh, Hawaii and he didn't have the little beard and the mustache and stuff like that. The, um, the producer was like, no, 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 absolutely not. I do not want 
uh, a comedian, you know, from Hawaii who doesn't even have a Japanese accent um, to, to play Mr. Miyagi. Forget it, forget it, forget it. But the director, the, the casting director really believed him. He's like, man, he's really good. I really think you should, you know, um, look at this guy. And so because he was, even though he was different, he didn't fit the description of what the, the you know, casting, um, the producer had in his mind. Um, he really liked what he did with the role. He like, my name is Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> and he really sold it. And then he grew the beard and the mustache and everything. He first, he like, in real life, he didn't have that, that Japanese accent. He was just you know, like your typical Hawaiian guy with, um, he spoke what they call pigeon. Pigeon is like broken up uh, English, but in, in the Hawaiian sense. So for example, if they say, hey, I would like a piece of paper. Uh, it's like, hey, bro, I like paper, you know? <laughs> and so they talk like that. Or um, it's like, what, do you have a problem with me? And in <laughs> Hawaii, they say, what, you like beef? You know, so like mm -hmm. they talk completely different. They don't sound like Japanese at all, <laughs> you know? Oh. So when they heard him, you know, this natural voice, they're like, no, 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 he's not the right guy. But can you imagine Karate Kid without that Mr. Miyagi? It's just, he made the movie, yeah. you know, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Sure so keep those things in mind. Um, so again, um, your basic things, um, any kind, anytime you have a, a location, it's all in caps. Um, you want to know, let them know if it's interior or exterior, the location and what time of day. And then here you have, you know, describing everything, describe the scene. Um, if it's the first time you're introducing a character, describe what the, the, the character is. Okay. We have an elderly male, you know, male person, you know, and, and you want to make sure that you're choosing characters that are important to the scene. Why do you need these characters? Do they help, do they help somebody um, move forward? Like when Harry Potter was, um, <clears throat> Let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, there's so many different examples. Um, there's this one particular scene where he goes back to his parents' home and there's this old lady that kind of leads it. First, they, they have old lady. The reason why they have an old lady leading him into the home uh, is because he, he doesn't think she's a threat. But then once you get into the house, you find out that the old lady is really uh, Nagini, the, the, the snake that wants to kill him. <laughs> so it's really important to have the elderly lady because it helps the character trust her because she's not really a threat. She's old and she's feeble and you don't realize that she's really this evil snake. So when you choose your characters, make sure that they're important to that scene. Make sense? Thoughts, comments? You okay? <laughs> yes, that makes sense. Okay, good, good, good. So play with it. Have some fun with it. I hope you do uh, You know some great things. I hope you continue to write. Keep practicing. Um, let yourself make mistakes. That's really important. A lot of people are so afraid of making mistakes and they're so afraid of getting their work out there because they're afraid of being judged. Get over that quickly because <laughs> it's okay to fail and, and fail often. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's some of the most famous actors, you know, like um, Denzel Washington, he didn't, you know, he never, uh, not, um, not Denzel Washington, um, Morgan Freeman, one of my favorite actors of all time. Um, he didn't start acting in movies until his mid forties, you know, so, um, you know, keep, keep that in mind. So keep, Thank keep you. trying, keep practicing, and eventually you'll get better the more you do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we hope to see you, see you in future classes. If you have any questions, definitely email me. Okay. Well, I just wanted to <laughs> make a comment well just to say well actually it was a great class but i just wanted to tell you if um if you look up on um youtube angel <laughs> angel's her name angel renee r-e-n-e-e -E -E, uh -huh. she, she does the um national anthem, anthem for our fit team ballpark over here and uh, uh -huh. the, um the um roger, roger dean, dean. Uh -huh. and she has her videos on there <clears throat> it's angel renee r-e-n-e-e -E -E. okay yeah. On I'll YouTube, the manager, so I just like to tell everybody because it's so great. <laughs> okay. National uh, we'll anthem, fit team. <laughs> uh, what was the last part? Uh, fit, fit team. The ballpark is called Fit F I T, and uh -huh. then T E A M. Okay, I will ballpark. check that out. Thank National you. anthem. Yeah, National she anthem. did it right before the whole coronavirus uh, set in. For in spring training. Yeah, spring training. Uh huh. Yeah, and she has other ones on there for Roger Dean, which is our other. Um, if you look that one up, I think everything kind of pops up, doesn't it? Yes. Angel? Yeah. Okay. And she has our... some other singing videos, but yeah. Okay, well, excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so thrilled that you you spent your Saturday morning uh, just hanging out with me. And yeah. uh, I, I hope you have found this helpful. I will send you guys the video so that way if you need to review it um, at any time, you're welcome to do so. Hopefully you got the handout that I emailed uh, yesterday and the reminder. And so that way you can print that out and, and use it as a guideline to kind of help you. Great. Thank you, thank so, you so much. much. Okay, thank you're welcome. Take care, guys. Good luck with your move. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.